Now that we've explored the acidity of the alpha position, we can notice something interesting about carbonyl compounds. We've seen that the carbonyl group is a CO double bond, and that the alpha position is mildly acidic. In carbonyl compounds that contain alpha hydrogens as well as the carbonyl group, then we have both a mildly acidic hydrogen and a mildly basic lone pair within this three atom fragment, the alpha carbon, the carbonyl carbon, and the carbonyl oxygen. The movement of a hydrogen from the alpha carbon to the carbonyl oxygen generates an isomer of the starting carbonyl compound. Here's the structure that results when we transfer this hydrogen, and it's called an enol because it contains a carbon-carbon double bond and a hydroxyl group. Kinetically, formation of an enol from a ketone, aldehyde, or other carbonyl compound is very rapid because all it involves is proton transfers, as we'll see in detail a little bit later. For that reason, it's often worthwhile to consider the reactivity and the favorability of formation of the enol version of a given carbonyl compound which we're used to seeing in its so-called keto form with the CO double bond and the alpha carbon saturated. Keto and enol forms of a particular carbonyl compound differ in the position of a hydrogen with respect to a three atom pi system. If we think about the enolate, the conjugate base of the enol or the keto form as a three atom pi system involving the alpha carbon and the carbonyl group, shift of a proton from one end of that pi system to the other interconverts the keto and enol forms. Isomers that are related in this way through the shift of a proton across a pi system are called tautomers. And the keto and enol tautomers of a carbonyl compound are probably the most famous example of tautomers. But there are others, for example the imine and enamine nitrogen derivatives of carbonyl compounds and enols respectively are tautomeric with respect to one another. Now to this point, we focused exclusively on the reactivity of keto forms of carbonyl compounds which suggests that generally they're favored over enol forms, and that's true. However, there are certain circumstances in which the enol form is especially stable and therefore thermodynamically favored. And this is one question we're going to address in this video. The second question we're going to address in this video is what is the mechanism of keto-enol interconversion, or what we call tautomerization? What is the mechanism of the conversion of one tautomer to the other, the keto to the enol form, or vice versa. We've hinted at that at the top of the slide, but we're going to look at the details and see that tautomerization must be acid or base catalyzed to proceed at an appreciable rate in general. Before diving into the mechanism though, let's ask about this question of when is the enol form favored. The fact that everything we've seen to date involves looking at just the keto form and not considering the enol form at all suggests that the keto form for simple ketones and aldehydes anyway, is heavily favored, and this is absolutely true. This means that if we were to draw, for example, reversible reaction arrows for the interconversion of a keto and enol form of a simple, let's say, ketone, the arrow pointing to the keto side would be much longer than the arrow pointing to the enol side. This is because thermodynamically, the keto form is much more stable, lower free energy, for example, than the enol form. The structural basis of this has to do with the relatively strong nature of the CO double bond relative to a CC double bond in the enol. Polarization of the CO double bond gives it a relatively high bond energy and an especial stability relative to a CC double bond. That said, there are some circumstances in which having a CC double bond is advantageous from a thermodynamic perspective in that it imparts additional stability. One such example involves beta dicarbonyl compounds. We're used to talking about the alpha position or the alpha carbon of carbonyl compounds. The beta carbon is simply the one next to the alpha carbon. So in this hypothetical ketone here, the beta carbon is this one. Beta dicarbonyl compounds have a carbonyl group at the beta carbon with respect to another carbonyl group. These have relatively stable enol forms and the reason for the stability of the enol form becomes apparent if we draw out its structure. So let's tautomerize this left-hand carbonyl group to generate one possible enol form of this beta dicarbonyl compound. So the carbonyl oxygen becomes part of a hydroxyl group. There's a CC double bond between the carbonyl carbon here, the beta carbon with respect to this carbonyl carbon, and the alpha carbon actually of both 
carbonyl groups, and the other carbonyl group is still intact since we're only tautomerizing the left-hand carbonyl group. What this reveals in the enol tautomer is the presence of actually a five-atom delocalized pi system in the enol that's lacking in the keto form. Recall that the hallmark of a delocalized pi system is the presence of multiple resonance structures, and we can generate such resonance structures within this enol by starting electron flow from the hydroxyl oxygen of the enol. So I won't draw any structures, but curved arrows like this demonstrate pretty clearly that there's strong electron delocalization in this enol tautomer. The presence of those additional resonance forms, which are lacking in the original structure, we can tell that there are no such resonance forms in the keto form of this molecule because there's a saturated carbon between the carbonyl groups. But when we make that carbon unsaturated through a tautomerization process, new resonance structures come in. The additional resonance stabilization and electron delocalization makes this enol tautomer for beta dicarbonyl compounds relatively stable. It may not be favored over the keto form, but it's certainly more stable than a plain vanilla enol for a simple ketone or aldehyde. Phenols are another classic example, and I'm actually going to start by drawing out a structure that we've seen before, a benzene ring substituted with a hydroxyl group. Now that we know about enols, it becomes apparent that a phenol is just a special case of an enol in which there's an enol embedded within an aromatic pi system. Now that we've seen, or now that we understand keto-enol equilibrium, we can absolutely draw a keto tautomer of a phenol. And in this particular straightforward example, it would look like this. Now this looks a little bit silly in light of the fact that this structure is non-aromatic. It contains a saturated carbon within a six-membered ring that, when unsaturated, is a benzene ring, is an aromatic benzene ring. And so, sort of just like the beta dicarbonyl case, in a way, we have many additional resonance forms in the enol tautomer of a phenol. The typical structure for a phenol that we've drawn many, many times before that were lacking in the corresponding keto form. The presence of a saturated or sp3 hybridized carbon within the ring of this keto form makes it much, much less stable than the aromatic enol tautomer of a phenol. So these two examples highlight situations when the enol tautomer is relatively stable as the result of either resonance, aromaticity, in general, electron delocalization is the effect going on in both of these cases. And you'll want to be on the lookout for these because the enol tautomer can often react very differently from the keto form. One thing to note about the enol, which we're already familiar with in the context of enolates and enamines, is that the alpha carbon of an enol is a good nucleophile. That's not the case for the keto form, since there are no pi electrons or non-bonding lone pairs at the alpha carbon of the keto form. But the enol contains a good nucleophile in the alpha carbon. In fact, the same is true of a phenol, but that's not the case for the keto form, which is much more electrophilic than nucleophilic. One more quick thing to note about this concerns the enol tautomer that's more stable in a case when we can generate multiple potential enol autonomers. So say, for example, we had a cyclohexanone like this with two different alpha carbons. I'm going to highlight these in two different colors. Tautomerization or enolization of this carbonyl compound could give rise to one of two possible enol tautomers. Now we have a question of which of these is more stable. And the key general principle here is one that you've probably seen before. For compounds containing carbon-carbon double bonds, the more substituted carbon-carbon double bond is associated with the more stable structure or the more stable enol tautomer in this particular context. And so unless we have one of those special conditions on the previous slide involving electron delocalization, the more substituted enol tautomer is the more stable. In this case, it's the one drawn in blue because the carbon-carbon double bond has four substituents in the blue tautomer, but only three substituents, three groups and a hydrogen in the red tautomer. So the blue tautomer is more stable than the red tautomer or enol form.